Hi guys, it's Camille here and today we're going to talk about the French toast by Peter Bernet. Published by a small press, Thirsty Books. Peter Bernet is a Scottish writer. His first novel, The Machine Doctor, published in 2002, was shortlisted for Scottish Book of the Year. Peter is also the author of Odium from 2004, The Superbook from 2008 and The Game Studio from 2012. In 2019 he published French Toast, a short story about how this book got into my hands. Peter saw my review of Doug's Uber report by Lucy Elman after she posted it on her Twitter account. He wrote to me in a very charming way, asking if I would be interested in reading his book. You know, most of the time when an author himself writes to me, it's a self-published writer and an email is almost always very generic, usually being nothing more than just a template, making it obvious it's pitched to as many addresses as possible. I can see the reasons for that, obviously. Um, it's hardly appealing enough for anybody, though, to agree on reading the book. So. Peter's email was very different, short but charming enough that I said yes, even though I was still thinking that Peter Bernet is a beginning writer. The book came with a cute note, which only increased the feeling of obligation on my part. I felt obliged to pick up the book and read it, and obviously because of that, because of feeling that obligation, I was walking around it for a couple of weeks. In situations like this one, when a writer contacted me asking to read his book, it happened probably three times in the past, and in those situations when I said yes, I follow the rule of no review if I have mostly negative things to say. I believe for a relatively unknown writer, the world is harsh enough as it is without me having to add to it. So in all those historical three cases when I said yes, I sent back an honest note saying that I am sincerely sorry, but for a reason such and such, I didn't like the book, but I could still review it, but it wouldn't be a positive review, so the decision is in an author's hands. And in all of those cases, I was asked not to review. Watching this video, you already know that I couldn't have disliked this book since I'm reviewing it, not mentioning the title of the video. And of course, under the condition that Peter Bournet didn't turn out to be a masochist, but he didn't. Eventually, I took this book book with me and three others when I was traveling to Lisbon at the end of the year. I opened it up and after 20 pages I knew this was my kind of a book. And that at least I would like it. French Toast on the plot level is narrated by Victor Yves, a film critic and a blogger, attempting to write a book about French-Swiss film director Jean-Luc Godard. Jobless after his services as a freelancer were turned down due to a scandalous review, Victor Eves is, a sort, is in a sort of a professional limbo until because of a sudden arrival of Goddard to a film festival in his town, he is tasked with accompanying him. Before we go any further, we should probably talk a bit about the director, Jean-Luc Godard. Jean-Luc Godard started his involvement with cinema as a film critic. As a student in the 50s, I believe, he became involved with a group of young film lovers that criticized mainstream French cinema, especially its emphasis on convention over innovation and experimentation. French cinema back then was hugely influenced by Hollywood. Therefore, Godard in his early films challenges the conventions of traditional Hollywood by rejecting its techniques and methodology. 
In his first movie, Breathless, from 1960, one of the pictures that started the French New Wave, he broke away from, from the studio settings and started experimenting by filming on the streets of Paris without any formalized permissions. Um, of course, that was also dictated by financial constraints and then smaller cameras, smaller cues were the result of it naturally. Goddard was pointing out that you don't need to have a huge machine behind you to make art. Through Victor Yves, the main character of French Toast, Peter Bournet sparks another round of conversations around that idea. Victor is a writer that tries to find his way in the demoralized culture industry where conservatism is favored and uniformization is monetized. His agent tells him directly that the only element that is really important in his book is the few words used as a jacket quote. Those words should evoke enough interest in the buyer, obviously, so he buys the book. While the book itself can be written by pretty much anybody with the help of a new software, what about the need of a whole marketing apparatus to make art? Peter Burnet, the author, uh, is not a self-published writer, but he is the one that has his works very rarely represented by an agent and he works with a very small publishing house, Thirsty Books. Similarly to Goddard, who didn't have a support of a great studio to create a wave and break the rules of making movies, Burnett seems to be following similar path on the literary side. And I wonder if Burnett's fascination with Goddard is triggered by his own attitude to the literary world where not having an agent is almost an artistic suicide. Um, not mentioning, and that is probably the biggest element of it all, is the marketing that comes with a contract with a big publishing house. You know, that contract, though, obviously carries some limitations. And because of that, we see we see very often which type of authors receive that high advances. Jenny Cummins. And I kind of even enjoy the narration in this hugely problematic book for what it is, but a groundbreaking work American Dirt definitely is not. Yet it was a seven-figure book deal. Seven-figure book deal. However, looking on the bright side of it, Goddard showed that in a situation where there is no serious investment involved, you have more room for experimentation, right? As the risk of failing doesn't carry that monetary value with it, right? Limitations can be good, as it forces you to rethink the form of art conventions and the rules of the medium, right? So, Breathless, uh, Goddard's first movie, was shot with a hand-handled cameras and only in natural lighting, just like documentaries were shot. You know, it manipulates your perception by making fiction feel more real. Those slight jumps of camera when the character is walking, then the slides of the camera when the character is moving. All of that is aiming at making you feel you are part of journalistic work more than a movie. Typically enough, this documentary style evolved and was adopted later on by Hollywood you know, as many of Goddard's techniques were. Goddard was very much influenced by Bertolt Brecht, who in his plays constantly interrupted audience involvement in the story by reminding them that they are watching a work of fiction, not a reality, just something made to resemble it. In Goddard's Breathless, you have a jump cut techniques that throw you away from the scene and give a signal to the brain that this is not real. You also have characters looking straight into the camera or talking to the audience. Goddard, just like Brecht, uh, didn't want the audience to be absorbed in the story psychologically, but to think about the story and have a dialogue with a story intellectually. 
As David Sterritt from his commentary about Breathless explains, the aim obviously is to analyze the reality around you, that the characters in the movie are there just to represent, right? So Peter Bournet in his French toast is having a dialogue with a reader about the current state of art and industrialization of it by mixing the fictional character who writes about failing at writing a book about Jean-Luc Godard, he creates a dichotomy where the reader is traveling between real life and the story, constantly measuring if the commentary involved in the book matches the reality the reader is living in. And Probably the best lesson to take out from Goddard's this time is to study the medium to understand what you are critiquing. Um, Goddard was critic before he was a filmmaker. He got to know his field of art and never stopped learning. His movies are full of references to the history of cinema. Breathless itself is a homage to Humphrey Bogart and Hollywood. So, Peter Bournet writes about the industry he is a part of, even, even if as a rebel and a critic he is not able to break away from the industry. He surely can find its remote corners, giving him the most area to be free, but still it's the industry you need to be in, in order to make your art accessible to even the tiniest of audience. All that that I just said sounds incredibly heavy. However, for this book to work, Peter Bournet needed to introduce gateways, offering humor, even if it's rather in its sarcastic and sometimes darker tone. Nonetheless, there are tones of it. And that is why I was engrossed from the very beginning with this book. It's not common to find a book where you are offered a witty, engaging criticism of the literary, cultural world with great references and commentary to the world of cinema and it's probably the most influencing yet now very marginalized director Jean-Luc Godard and all of that comes with being entertained to the level of a few loud out laughs. I'm aware this is not going to be a book for everybody, just like Goddard is not a director for everybody, but if you are the type of a reader that instead of escapism seeks art to discuss with its medium, even if it's a discussion where you might find yourself at the opposite end, if you are that type of a reader, this is a book that would be a pity to miss. Okay, guys. That's it. Thank you for watching. Please note that when researching Godard, I've watched a few reviews of Breathless uh, on YouTube that helped me to understand the movie better and build the links between the Godard director and Peter Burnett, the writer. I will link those videos about Breathless down in the box below. Especially helpful was the video from the channel Cinema Tyler titled What I Learned from Watching Breathless. Definitely go and check it out. Okay, let me know what is your attitude to lesser known writers. If you make an attempt to research books that are not necessary on the front pages of the biggest publishing houses websites. So yeah, I would be very interested in uh, talking with you about that. And also, if you watch or watched Godot, let me know which one is your favorite movie and which one you think I should go and check out. I've seen only a few of those. Okay, guys, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.